Thanks very much, Steve. You know, reform should mean making it better, not worse. It doesn't mean fixing the result. The best reform, I think, would be to limit the terms of members of parliament to two terms. We might get some turnover in this place and more new ideas. The President of the United States and others only have two terms in parliament and we get a real different innovative approach in the US. We need it here in Australia. We need to eliminate career politicians who hang around this place, sometimes for 30 years like a bad smell, when some of them should be in a nursing home. That's the sort of reform I think we need, right? We need to remove politicians' super entitlements to be the same as the rest of the community. In 2012, I was a delegate to the National Convention of the Liberal Party in Melbourne, where we, instruct, we were instructed to pass motherhood resolutions and to stand and clap and hail the leader whenever he entered. Much like Comrade Stalin used to do in Russia or in any Eastern Bloc communist countries. And you know, the ALP is just as guilty in limiting their agenda and standing and clapping for their leader wherever he comes in. So the show must go on, they say, in show business. But politics shouldn't just be show business. Then there's our free press where 70% of all our newspapers are owned by one American who tells his editors what and when to write and trades favourable coverage for favours. The Treasurer, in an answer to one of my questions, said it would be a waste of government resources to determine how many millions of dollars the Australian government spends with News Corporation each year. In Parliament, I can ask one question every two weeks and my speaking opportunities are limited. Every government and opposition member asks a question in question time determined not by them personally, but by their organisation. Parliament is a very stage managed and things are run by a consensus between the government and opposition. I get five minutes adjournment speech every four to five weeks. When I arrived in Parliament, I sized up the situation. I looked to my right and at the time I thought, these guys are pretty hopeless, you know, by corporate world standards. Then I looked to my left and I thought, well, these guys are, are pretty hopeless as well. Then I realised that they were advised by people who were absolutely hopeless, the public service. It's not the Labor way or the Liberal way that matters. It's the right way for all Australians. Palmy and I became in, in Australia's fourth largest um, political party at the last election. We received more first preference votes than the National Party and the Liberals only became government because of our preferences. In the Senate, we were able to use our numbers or well, the threat of using our numbers to achieve some outstanding outcomes for the Australian people. First of all, we stopped the government's co-payment. We stopped negative changes to university. We stopped $10 billion in cuts to social security. We freed 436 children and families from detention on Christmas Island. We freed 1,500 people in total from Christmas Island. Resolved over 30,000 cases in detention. Introduced at our, our recommendation the Safe Haven Enterprise visas. We saved our votes in the Senate, saved the low-income super for over 2 million Australians. We kept the school kids bonus and low-income support. And the carbon tax debate, we ensured the government reduced electricity prices Australia-wide by 10% as, as the cost of our support for removal of the carbon tax. We moved in the Senate 15 changes to direct action and then passed direct action so it could take effect and achieve the outstanding results it has so far. We saved the Climate Change Authority, saved the Clean Energy Corporation, saved ARENA, saved the RET, and we fixed pensions for ex-veterans and ex-servicemen and women over 55. More importantly, I like to think we, we played a significant role in stopping Campbell Newman in Queensland. We're able to recommend to the government and have implemented three government inquiries, one on trade investment and growth, one on the Australia Fund, which was for drought relief, and one which you've probably all heard about into the Queensland government. Our votes were critical in abolishing the mining tax and abolishing the carbon tax. And last week I introduced a private member's bill on the foreign death penalty. We protected maritime workers' jobs, proved that the government, that our debt isn't as bad as they said it was in the budget last year. And Cabinet adopted our policy to ban lobbyists from party positions as the first decision of the Abbott government. We stopped the Grain Corp sale, introduced a private member's bill about that. We see our electoral reform uh, suggestion being taken up with pens instead of pencils, kept the Qantas Australian owned, stopped changes to income tax threshold and stopped the financial incentive to sell public assets, assets saved Australian jobs and stopped slash slashing university research grants. So a lot can be achieved by parties that are not necessarily the opposition or the government. The committee's recommendations to change the Senate voting system reflect the membership of the committee. There were no members from Palm United that were members of the committee. 
There were no members from the crossbench in the House of Representatives. I wasn't on the committee. Kathy McGowan wasn't on the committee. Bob Catter wasn't on the committee. Andrew Wilkie wasn't on the committee from the House of Representatives. In the Senate, none of the three Palm United Senators who at that time held the balance of power in Australia were on it. Senators Bob Day from South Australia wasn't on it. Senator David Lynham from New South Wales wasn't on it. Senator John Madigan from Victoria and Senator Muir from Victoria wasn't on it. There are in this place about 226 members of parliament which represent about half a percent each for each Australian. So to, to make these allegations that Australians of a certain minority shouldn't be represented don't reflect the reality of this place. We've got 226 members as I said, all of them represent average on a half a percent of the population. If the changes recommended by the committee were implemented, in South Australia at the time Senator Xenophon was first elected to parliament, he wouldn't have made it. Politics would have lost his great service and his great contribution, but it hasn't because we had a democracy operating and that's why Nick Xenophon is a great senator to, that he is today. The recommendations of the committee, I believe, are unconstitutional and will, if be, and will, if made, be challenged by our party in the High Court of Australia. The committee was purely made up of members of the Liberal Party, the Labor Party and the Greens. Not surprising, the committee reports and recommendation serve the interest of those parties and the individual politicians who made up the committee and not the Australian public. The committee report destroys the concept of democracy and even handedness in Australia as well as the notion of fairness, fair go and participation. Democracy is a loser if it is implemented. Australia will become what I referred to at the start of my address, a system where only the coalition will be able to control the Senate and Labor and Greens will be the only other parties of any significance. If we believe in democracy and people elected the government, surely the way to win is by putting together the ideas that will attract the votes necessary to govern, not change the voting system just because you can't win. The Senate voting system has stood Australia in good stead since Federation uh, over 100 years. We've had various Senate voting systems that have worked well. It has uh, restrained governments that would seek too much power for power's sake and deliver to us the Australia we all enjoy today. Those members of the committee that were made the recommendations were members of the original committee appointed by the 43rd Parliament. New members and senators elected in the 43rd Parliament weren't on the committee and were excluded from the committee. And if the recommendations were to be adopted, besides entrenching one, a one party, the Liberal Party in control of the Senate, they would seek to eliminate Australia's fourth largest party, our party, and an independent voice of Australians from political debate. In reality, Australians would be living in a one-party state where one vote can't make a difference. Thanks very much.